is our series anchor verse. It's found in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with, say it out loud, all joy. All joy. Not a little bit of joy. Not some joy. No, no, no. He's going to fill with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow. Say overflow. Overflow Overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, give us ears to hear you. We need it. There's so many things contending on the daily for our attention. There's so many distractions, so many things trying to put a lid on our ability to worship and and praise. Even during this worship moment, never let a day go by that I don't rise and give you praise. And there's some that feel like they're in a valley. They feel like they're in a rut. God, today, I pray that you give us ears to hear you. Encourage us today with your word that does not return to you void. It was as power. It's as powerful as it is. It's as powerful now as it was back then. So God, give us a mind to understand and most importantly, a heart to receive. If you receive a shout, I receive it. So today, if you're taking down notes, I haven't done this stat in a minute. If you've been around Hope City, you you can probably finish my sentence on this. But if you're a hearer only, if you came in and the only thing uh, that that you're you're just you're just watching and you're you're listening, but if you don't active listen and you're a hearer only, statistically it says you only retain five percent. That's it, five percent. That's not a lot. If you take down notes in real time, your retention rate goes up to thirty five percent. If you take down notes and then go back and reread through them, your retention rate goes up as high as 90 to 95%. Elbow gently the person next to you and say, never stop growing. I tell my kids this all the time. Play-Doh is only fun when it stays shapeable, moldable, and pliable. But when Fox finds it under the couch and says, make it come back to life again, I'm like, I don't even know if that's Play-Doh. Amen. (laughs) No, we have to stay shapeable. We have to stay moldable because the world will harden you. The the world will cause calluses to form on your heart and people start deconstructing and pushing away from church and start challenging their faith and start dissecting the Bible in a way that only fits their desires. Y'all, we got to stay shapeable. Elbow the person on the other side of you and say, that was for you. I feel that was for you. All right. If you're taking down notes, now that I've said, let's take down notes, today's message, if you're taking down notes, the title is How to Build for Blessing. How to Build for Blessing. And we're going to be looking at a man in First Chronicles by the name of Jabez. If you're new to the Bible, you can call him Jabez. That's ridiculous. It's just the way I think. Sorry. Jabez was a man, and we're going to read this in a moment, who dared to pray a bold, audacious prayer. And he asked God to trust him with even more. Shout even more. Even more. more. First Chronicles chapter four, verse 10, it's on the screens. This is our main text for today. Jabez or Jabaz cried to the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me. God, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from evil so it might not hurt me. The last line right here, Read it with me. And God granted his request. Say that prophetically over your own life. And God granted my request. Say it again. And God granted my request. Come on, say it. And God granted our request. Come on, one more time. Give God praise for the reading of his word. And God granted his request request. So he said, this is another translation. He said, God, that you would enlarge my territory. We were in Minnesota. I went to the frozen chosen area of the country and did uh, one person. (laughs) They're like, I was delivered. It's cold y'all. It's not right now, but it will be. Uh, but, and I was walking around like kind of over the top, like, Hey, I want some potato soup. And the lady's like, we don't talk like that here. I was like, ah, I just, (laughs) <laughs> Stop. Anyways, so we're, we're there. I'm doing a first Wednesday for some friends. You remember the guy, Pastor Peter uh, uh, Haas, who preached here? The guy with the faux hawk, the DJ. He's a lot of fun. You guys remember him? So we preached for him and Pastor Carolyn. They're amazing. Their church is phenomenal. Hope City's back. No, they're amazing. What are we talking about? No, they're incredible. And I loved being with them first Wednesday. Well, while we were there, they said, hey, uh, we, we, wanna, we would love for you to come pray uh, over something that we're believing God for. We're putting our faith on 
some territory that we believe maybe God is opening the door for us for. And I said, let's go. So we went first to grab a good cup of coffee. And then we went to the place and y'all, we're walking this place and we're praying. We got our hand on the ground. I'm hugging a tree and praying. (laughs) I was praying, just God, like, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And as we were praying, this moment inspired my faith. Like I came, I came back filled up with more faith for our church because of this moment right here. Pastor Peter prayed this prayer. This is what he said. He said, God, if we have the capacity to steward this property, then entrust it to us. And if not, then keep it in the kingdom and let someone else that is called to steward this place, let it stay and let it be in your kingdom and let somebody else use this property for your will. But that prayer, God, if, if we have the capacity to steward this property, I had so much respect for him in that moment because he was wise enough to ask God, watch this, to close the door if it wasn't his will. Wow. How often do we pray those prayers? Wow. I don't know, most of the time in society now is like, Lord, I got to get paid. Like <laughs> my neighbor drives that new Escalade. I, I need at least a Honda Santa Fe. Like No, but how often do we say, God, you know what's best for me. If this isn't best for me and I don't have the capacity to steward this, then close the door and bless somebody else with it. That he would have that much sincerity and that much wisdom to say, God, close this door. Because here's the reality. If you can't steward the blessing, the blessing can actually break you. If you can't steward what God has, it can actually break. That's loaded. You might want to take a picture. If you can't steward the blessing, the blessing can actually break you. It's like giving, watch this. Let me give it a a little bit more in layman's terms so we can kind of catch it a little bit better. It's like giving, my son Brecken is next week going through all his, uh, what is it, what are they called? Driver's ed classes. Um, I don't even know how I got my license, so it's a miracle. But he's going through his classes, and he's going to go get his permit, and then we're going to start driving. And he, th- he thinks he's got it because he can drive the golf cart. <laughs> and so, but it's like giving a first-time driver a Ferrari. If you can't steward the blessing, it can actually break you. It's like giving a first-time driver a Ferrari. They'll be excited in the moment, but it's way too much power for the season they're in. I pray this often, God, entrust us with what is for us right now in this season. Don't put more on us right now, but God, enlarge our territory, enlarge our border. Bless us to reach more people, but if it's not your timing, then close the door. That's a pretty audacious prayer. But here's the truth. As Jabez was praying, and Jabez was standing there with audacious faith, I feel like what we did, Pastor Peter and Pastor Carolyn praying, God, if we have the capacity, trust us, but if not, close the door. Here's the truth. We have to have the wisdom to trust that if God doesn't hand it to you, it's actually still a blessing. And God can still work it in your your favor. Look at the person next to you and say, uh, God is working in your favor. Look at your second choice. Unless it's your ex and say, it's not over. terrible. Look at you. It's not over. Really? No, it's definitely over. Amen. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you next week. I'm sorry. I, all right. Four key takeaways, (laughs) four key takeaways from Jabaz's life. Here we go. Four key takeaways with Jabez's prayer that we can learn from. Number one, take a picture. He asked God to bless him. That's awesome. He's a man of integrity, obviously, or this entire text wouldn't even have been mentioned. He's a man of character. Number two, he asked God to enlarge his territory. He said, God, would you increase my responsibility? Number three, he prayed that God would be with him, that he would stay close to him. There's a great grace that God places on your life in certain seasons to take on more. When Pastor Jackie and I first got married and we were just out here, just hanging out, young love, just fun and living. And she's like, I think it's time to have a baby. (laughs) 
And I remember reading books and shepherding a child's heart and skimming other books and trying to figure out how to be a good dad. And the truth is, I needed the help of the Holy Spirit. I needed God right by my side to teach me what I needed to be who I was supposed to be. Jabez prayed, God, if you're gonna do all of this, if you'll answer my prayer, would you stay close to my side? Number four, he asked God to protect him, to keep him from harm. In this even more series, we're looking at how when God's presence is poured out in every area of our lives, we begin to grow and experience even more faith, even more hope, even more peace, even more courage, even more clarity and perseverance. But even beyond that, Jabez here asks God, Lord, give me more favor. Give me more blessings. Because the truth is, if you'll bless me, the domino effect will be I'll bless others. If you'll take care of me, I give you my word, I'll take care of someone else. Because when God does this in our lives, it should always lead to a posture of gratitude. And ultimately, it should lead to a more generous heart. Because you know what ends up happening? We get distracted by the economy. We get distracted by society. We get distracted by all the noise that we become holy hoarders. Always assuming we're not going to have enough. When Jabez is saying, God, would you do this? It wasn't just for Jabez. See, when I ask God to bless our family, it's not just for Jackie and I, it's for legacy and for our lineage. When I ask God to bless our house, it's not just to build new buildings and take more territory. No, we pray every day that God will pour out his spirit on your life, your family. Every day, bold, audacious prayers. There is a purpose to God blessing and pouring out favor on our lives. And there are reasons why God chooses to entrust and bless us. But Jabez is different because when we read about it, we actually don't see beyond this prayer. We don't actually see what happens beyond the moment. What we walk away with is God granted his request. Like so many other incredible heroes of faith, all throughout the Bible, we actually can see beyond their blessing. When we look at people like Daniel, Joshua, Joseph, even Abraham in Genesis, or Moses in Exodus, Mary in the Gospels, we see less uh, of a glimpse of their prayer life, but we can see clearly the legacy that followed the blessing and followed what God was doing in their life. And I've been studying the meaning of blessing, preparing for this message. And the blessing that God pours out on his people is often received by a certain type of person. Say out loud, I'm that type of person. Even if you don't believe it, prophesy Say, I'm that type of person. Look at the person next to you and say, you're that type of person. Come on. Now, there's a certain person that the mark of a great man or woman of God is a combination of both audacious faith and diligent obedience. I'm going to say it again. The mark of a great man or woman of God is the combination of both audacious faith, but also diligent obedience. When you're faithful and you're disciplined to grow every day in God, when you get at his feet and say, God, like this 21 days of prayer and fasting, do you think I want to not eat? <laughs> Food is one of the greatest things in life. No, no, no. You know what the fast tells us? Whichever way you're fasting. A fast tells us in January and August, hey, flesh, you no longer control my life. Yeah. Amen. I I'm going to turn off the noise and I'm going to get at the feet of Jesus and I'm not moving until I see my miracle. I'm not moving until I see you move in my life. And as we grow and we're faithful and we're disciplined and growing in audacious faith and diligent obedience, here's what happens. Fruit follows. You'll start walking with more patience. You'll start living out the fruit of the spirit. Why? Because you're directly connected to the vine. He's the vine, we're the branches. If we, that's a choice, remain in him and him in us, we will bear much fruit. The more you grow daily, the more you stay in his presence. I'm telling you right now, fruit follows. I've said this before, faithfulness, I'm putting it on the screen, faithfulness isn't always fun, but it is always fruitful. And you can add to it, faithfulness and obedience isn't always fun, but it is always fruitful. The story of Jabez confirms this in 1 Chronicles 4, 9, where the Bible describes Jabez as a man of honor. It said that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and we can discern again that if Jabez's entire moment was mentioned here in the word, 
He must have been a man of considerable integrity and great character. So while many of us will ask and pray for God's favor and blessings, the truth is blessings actually come with a weight. Not heaviness. Heaviness is a spirit. If you're feeling heavy, then check your sodium intake. <laughs> By the way, a little sub thing. I just, I feel proud of myself. Uh, Jackie's been clean 13 years. And when I say clean, I mean not eating gluten. Uh, she's been gluten-free for 13 years. Uh, and she's so disciplined. It's shocking. She's like, I won't let wheat germ touch my lips. <laughs> she's never said that. <laughs> She's gluten-free, dairy-free. She's better than me. Uh, I'm 16 days gluten-free. What are we talking about? Lost 11 pounds. Josh on our team said, do you feel better? I said, I do. He said, are you happy? I said, I am not. I am not happy. I'm not happy anymore. <laughs> the blessing of God... When God pours out his spirit on your life, it actually comes with a weight. Well, prove that to me. Luke 12, 48, the Bible tells us to whom much is given, much is required. That's why I love Pastor Peter's prayer so much. God, if we have, if you've blessed us with the capacity to receive this, to steward this gift, entrust us, God. But if not, keep it in your kingdom and give it to someone else. Close the door if it's not your will. Write this down. Why Jabez? Because J Jabez had the character to carry. He had the character to carry the weight of that blessing. And that's why God granted his request, because he wasn't going to put more on him than he could handle. So let me ask you this loaded question. Do you have the character to carry what God wants to pour out in your life? Ask yourself, do I have the character to carry what God has for my life because oftentimes we pray these bold, audacious prayers, but we won't prioritize living a life of character. I'm gonna step on some toes today. Like I wore some of my retro J's and I don't wanna crease them, but I'll step on your toes a little bit. In order to walk in true biblical favor and blessing, we have to prioritize both. A life of character, a life of obedience, a life of willingness, because here's the truth. I've preached this for a long time. You can't stop God's blessings, but you can block the blessing. You can't stop his blessings, but because of free will, oh yeah, you can get in the way. God's like, I wanted to fulfill her dream, but she got in the way and she got caught up in the wrong toxic relationship and she pulled away from church and she pulled away from serving and she pulled away from giving and she pulled away from her, her faith. We can't stop God's blessings, but we can block them. God answers prayers. But are we fully prepared to receive what he's providing? Wave at me real quick. Show of hands across every campus. If you're watching online, online I don't know, you could hit like an emoji or something like a hand. Um, how many of y'all would say uh, with full transparency um, that you have a, a storage unit? Like, like it's a bad thing. <laughs> People are like, me? No, come on. Now I'm going to ask it again because only six of you. How many of y'all have a storage unit? This isn't a trick question. Okay, great. Thanks. We have a storage unit, and uh, I was studying. This is just some of the rabbit trails I went while studying for this message. Storage, storage units are kind of a big deal. I read a report that said that there are 1.5, watch this, billion with a B, 1.5 billion square feet of rentable storage space across the United States. That's more than 26,000 football stadiums. Okay, why are you telling us this? We pay for a storage unit. If it flooded or burnt down tomorrow, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't miss anything in there. It's just taking up space. And y'all, it is packed. It's packed, packed. Like, I probably should have cleared it out a long time ago. I probably should have gone through it and thrown away stuff. We took a day where I and rolled up the door. And she just goes like this, really? And I was like... <laughs> and what's in there? Just all kinds of stuff. I have OG, original Jordans in there. I've got 11 filled Wheaties boxes with the greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan. There's weebles and rats that have probably eaten it. I've got toys that if you touch it wrong, you'll get tetanus. Like, <laughs> it's a little bit of a hoarding sort of 
deal and our storage unit is packed. Well, why are you telling us that? Because if someone today, and this isn't manipulative, this isn't like I'm, I'm using the platform to ask for this, so please take it as an analogy. But if I was in the lobby and somebody walked up and said, Pastor Daniel, we feel led to bless you guys with a brand new living room set. I'd say, wow, thank you. Who told you? <laughs> no, the truth is, our storage unit, if I wanted to say, well, thank you. Thank you for that blessing. Thank you for, for God speaking to them and blessing me with this. The truth is, I don't have room enough to receive it. Not because I'm filled to a place of overflow, because I haven't cleared the clutter. Because I haven't let go of some things that are taking up, that are taking up space. Catch this, catch this, catch this. In the same way, with our personal lives, our spiritual lives, there's too many of us that have use, use, useless things, cluttering spaces in our lives where we can't see the blessing of God and the blessing that God's even placed in front of us. And if God wanted to bless you, you wouldn't have anywhere to put it. So let me be real for a moment. This is the stepping on the toes. So hopefully you're, you're wearing steel toe boots. Uh, maybe you've been praying for a spouse, but you haven't been disciplined in the word and you've refused to give up that lust problem. You've, you, you've, you've refused to give up looking at pornography. You've refused to grow as a daughter or grow as a son. God bless me with a spouse. And God's like, Hey, you, you need to clear clutter first. Before I can, that stepped on somebody's toes. I'm going to keep moving. Maybe you've been asking God to bring more increase to you financially, but you live with a closed fisted posture. So when the word of God is clear and says, Hey, tithe 10% of your increase, bring it back to the house of God so that more people can be romanced to Jesus and reached. And you say, that's awesome for everybody else, but we live closed fisted. So where it says we should tithe and give our offerings, you refuse to release it. And because you refuse to release it, God can't release what's in his hands. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday at prayer, and he asked me, he said, hey, what's the percentage of people in our church that tithe? And when I told him, he was shocked. He's like, what? Not what? That's amazing. I'm like, what? That's really low. And I said, well, in Americanized culture, especially Christianity in America, we have more of a spectator mentality instead of a participator mentality. We, we don't have an owner mentality. This, is, this isn't our church. This is our church. And we're reaching more and more and more people far from Jesus and doing whatever it takes. And I told him, I said, you know, if everybody did something, then we would never have a money issue. We could take more territory, build more campuses, launch more campuses, do more mission trips, open more hope centers, reach more people. But if you're constantly living closed fisted and you're not clearing the clutter or allowing God to move because maybe fear or anxiety that you're not going to have enough is overtaking you, whatever it is, receiving God's blessings, it has to be connected to an obedient heart. God, I'll do whatever you ask. Courageous, audacious prayers, the character to carry. But then our part is we have to make room. We have to make room by clearing the clutter. Write, write this down. We have to posture ourselves for more. Th that's, a, that's a choice. We have to posture ourselves for more. I want to be, be a man like Noah where I'm building the boat before a single drop of rain even falls. Because the truth is when increase and in opportunity comes, and if you're in business, you'll know this, when increase and in opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. You, you have to prepare ahead of time. Because the question is not, will God pour out blessings on us? The question is, will you be the man of God or woman of God filled with righteousness and have the character necessary to receive what God wants to pour out? I'm preaching better than you're responding. I'm preaching to myself. Because for many of us, we'll, we'll walk out the spiritual journey and we'll reach the awareness that God will place blessing on character. But what happens is we end up with the realization that there's a few things that need to be cleared out. We have to make room for what God wants to do. But here's the truth. Statistically, we just don't want to put the work in. God's like, you need to work on your spiritual condition. All right, God, cool, cool, cool. But I got to finish this Netflix series first. I need a word from the Lord. Put down your social media. Lay down things that are a distraction. Get your face in the book. And start reading the Bible. Everything you need is in the word. Amen. Spending time in his presence. But a lot of times we just don't want to put the work 
in. I would love to see 100% participation. I would love to see everybody show up to our prayer moments and be like, hey, this is over fire code. Like, this is out of control. But every single day, we're taking steps to grow more and more and more. And as your pastors, if you call us your pastors, we're going to push you more and more towards Jesus so you can grow and become more like him. I'm not looking at Pastor Jackie at this moment because the truth is I can see it. I can see her blue, crazy piercing blue eyes. There's a reason why our garage is still packed full of stuff. Uh, I should be in there clearing out some clutter. I should be in there throwing out some stuff, sewing some stuff, selling some stuff, lighting some stuff on fire. Like there's things in that garage that'll probably be there for a minute. Why haven't you cleared it out? I just simply don't want to put in the work. And the heat index is 214 degrees. But the truth is, in order for that to end up a place that we can occupy more freely, I'm going to have to put in the work. Look at the person next to you and say, it's time to clear the clutter. Look at your second choice and say, it's time to get rid of the junk in the trunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> if this is your first time, you're going to experience more of that. That's, I wasn't going to say it. It's in my notes. Literally says, probably don't say this, but I said it. Come on. We can laugh. We can laugh. Y'all laugh out in the world. Why can't we laugh in the church? Come on. Get the stuff. Clear the clutter. Clear the clutter. All right, here we go. I was watching the other day when I was in Minneapolis. I was watching. I don't know why I went on a binge watching rampage of the show Hoarders. Has anybody watched it? Oh, gosh. Everything that, that these folks were hoarding, they thought would bring them increased joy and peace. And it ended up being the opposite. They ended up trapped. They ended up in a, in a ditch. They ended up in a rut. They ended up having to call for, for someone. They ended up calling someone for help. Like, please come help me. I have too much junk. And, and, and let's be honest. Wave at me if you're a low-key hoarder. Come on. Uh, low-key. That's okay. Like a tiny hand, like just like, mm, so. uh, here's the and I'm not talking about collectors. I know somebody in the lobby is going to be like, those Happy Meal toys from the 80s are going to be worth a fortune in 2050. I'm not talking about you, sir. I'm talking about people that when you pull up to their house, their mini blinds are squeezed up against the windows because there's too much stuff in the house. Like too many bobbleheads in your office that you can't yourself go in there. Like, no, the truth is there are things that we hold on to for way too long. I said it a moment ago, but the thing about this show, I, maybe it's just the compassion in me, but at one point I was watching the story about this lady who was at a really, really low place. And she said, I don't know why, in a real twisted way, this stuff makes me happy. It's the only thing that makes me happy. And the team surrounded her and people came and cleaned out her house. But she had to own it and admit I'm struggling in this area. The Christian walk is no different. This is what the Bible says in James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is effective. In order to see real breakthrough in our lives, we have to clear the clutter. About a month ago, I was able to go up to the Sacramento Mountains. I told you all about it before, but I was up in the Sacramento Mountains at a men's retreat and there's a couple hundred guys out there and we're worshiping and Pastor Brandon was preaching and I was preaching. We did ATVing and it, we were driving a little erratic on the side of the mountain. We had these jokers up to like 50, 50 miles an hour and I had like windshield wipers and air conditioning. It was special. Uh, Pastor Brandon was in like a, like a Mad Max vehicle. Like it was insane. And I went around him at one point, hit this water ditch and turned like Fast and the Furious and punched it and threw mud all over him. So I got the victory. Come on, somebody. I ended up winning. And he's not here. He's preaching at Arcadia campus today. So he can't deny it or accept the loss, but he lost. Okay. Later on that night, we went to a thing called the point of silence. And the point of the night and the point of that moment was you walk up to this place and they have a fire and a cross and everybody's out there and it's just quiet. And Pastor Brandon and I didn't get the memo. So he's like, yo, this is awesome. Look at all this fire. Like it was, <laughs> and people were like, shh. It's the point of silence. And we were like, what's the point? And they were like, the point is to be silent. <laughs> Why are you telling us that? There was a really cool moment where a bunch of men, I mean like successful businessmen to a couple guys that I had met that got out of prison the day before, 
broken men to men who have overcome, to guys who are in a low place, who compartmentalize their pain. And we had a James 5, 16 moment where we cleared the clutter. And the pastor got up and said, hey, if you've got anything you need to confess, speak it out, for your brothers are rallying around you. And y'all, there was some crazy things said, some broken things, some things that guys had been carrying now into their early 50s that they were still carrying from when they were five. God wants to pour out more, even more. But if you're filled up with all the wrong things and you're filled up with a lot of shame or condemnation or brokenness and you haven't cleared the clutter, then you'll never fully walk in the freedom that he wants you to walk in. Come on, say it again. I'm gonna clear the clutter. In the midst of our spiritual clutter, we need to first repent. These, this groups model that we do is not just to put things on the calendar. Our freedom groups, y'all, if you've been through freedom, make some noise. It's brothers and sisters that come together in our own messes. We allow God to work through all of it, remove some things that need removed so that God can restore, heal, and place a deposit in our hearts. This might be a toxic relationship that has to be called out. This might be an addiction birthed through loneliness, something that might be, maybe it was satisfying for a season, but it's actually now something that's pulling you away from God and isolating you. Whatever it is, I want to challenge you today. Quit hoarding it. Clear the clutter. Go through HC Connect following the service. If you've been sitting on the sideline, jump in and serve. When you serve with some, uh, someone else and you've got a brother and sister serving alongside of you, it's a great reminder to keep the clutter cleared. Lead a group. Jump in with both feet. Join a group. We're better together. Come on, make, make some noise one more time. We're better together. All right, I want you to ask yourself this question. Can I be trusted with what God wants to bless me with? You can write it down, take a picture of it, but I want you at some point, maybe today or this week, can I be trusted? Like Pastor Peter's prayer, God, if you'll entrust us with this, if we have the capacity, can I be trusted with what God wants to bless me with, what he wants me to steward? Luke 16, 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. But whoever's dishonest with very little, little will also be dishonest with much. Can God trust you? I remember when Jackie and I, we were asking God for some increase. And uh, we said, God, if you'll bless us, um, here's our word. We, we drew a line in the sand. We put our faith on it. God, if you'll bless us, we're gonna bless others. I mean, when someone has a need, we, we, we wanna help. We're gonna do it. And we're fired up. We're like, let's go. Like, we were so excited. Like, yeah. Come on, God's going to move. And then we had some unexpected blessings hit our house. And we were like, maybe the next time. Maybe the next time, Lord. Because, I mean, we finally have a little bit something. And No, we didn't. We didn't do that. We fulfilled our word and said, God, we're going to follow through on this, even though it stings a little bit. You know, with our tithe, you know, we have tithe for over 20 years. Never miss a beat. Even in a low place when we didn't have anything. Why? Because it doesn't belong to us. If you understand the principles and you understand the revelation of who you are, the breath we breathe, when we worship the Lord, we're simply giving him his breath back. In him we live, we move, and we breathe. The gifts, the skills, everything that's made you successful, oh yeah, that comes from him. I talked to a friend of mine yesterday, very successful in business. And he just, the revelation is, yeah, this tithe doesn't belong to me. These gifts and skills, they don't belong to me. I'm just stewarding them for God to move in my, my life. In, in Minnesota, I talked to a gentleman, and he said, I remember when my mama, he said, the reason I feel like I'm blessed in business now is that I remember when my mom on her welfare check would say, no, 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 baby. We're gonna give back to God so that the church can reach more people like us. And he said, you know, now, uh, I'm able to take care of my mom. I was able to buy my mom a house because of the business skills that God's blessed me with because of the principles of recognizing what was God's and how all of this is God's. Do you have the availability? Can you be trusted with? Because here's the truth. Jackie and I stayed committed to it. And when we stayed committed to our word, we saw God show up and stay committed to his word because his word doesn't return to him void. If he said it, it's true. He's faithful to complete the work he 
started. But here's the key. When we gave our word and we followed through, here's what we learned. Blessing is built on character. Blessing is built on character. It's built on your word. So when it comes to living a life like Jabez, we see a man with audacious faith, but we also see a man of great honor and character. So something else that we've learned from Jabez today, first, we need to do this. We can apply this. Number one, we have to live a life fully surrendered to Christ. This is the first and foremost foundational side of being available for him to do even more in our lives. Number one, we have to live a life fully surrendered to Christ. Number two, we have to start praying bold, audacious prayers. We're really good in our humanity. It's the human condition to talk about how bad things are, to talk about how big our mountains and our Goliaths are. But when you pray bold, audacious prayers, you start telling your Goliath how big your God is. No, no, the name of Jesus will always be bigger than the name of diabetes and heart disease and fibromyalgia and chronic pain. And you start believing and declaring and speaking through the word of God, bold, audacious prayers. And number three, we have to steward now for future seasons. And when we lock into that cadence and rhythm, this is our prayer. And this is a prophetic statement. I believe the walls, the walls of Hope City will not be able to contain the stories of God's favor and blessings and miracles and fruit that breaks out from within them for your life. Come on, shout, I receive that. Come on, I receive. I receive. Would you stand your feet? Would you close your eyes for just a moment? God, here's our prayer. Our prayer is that today, God, we would clear out the clutter. We would clear out the storage unit of our hearts. So before the prayers even leave our mouths, we know that you're gonna show up and move because we know who you are, God. I wanna be a man like Joseph who sees potential even in the depths of a prison, just with your eyes closed, just for a moment. I want to be a man like Daniel who sees a lion as a pillow because surely the Lord will shut the mouth of my enemies. I'm going to be a man like Caleb shouting, my God has surely delivered the promised land. I want to be a man like Joshua who had the faith to march around the walls of Jericho and walked around those walls and marched around those walls before he even saw a crack form in the wall because of his audacious faith. He made room. I want to see women like Mary that when God says it, they steward or women like Ruth who sees the moment of God's salvation and acts. At Hope City, we want to see our children with loaves and fish placed in the Savior's hands with great faith saying, my God will do more than enough. And God, we want to see our elderly like Abraham and Sarah who shout that new life and new energy has come from old bones. We will see a church covered in righteousness. We will see a church filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We will see a church discerning with wisdom, speaking with prophetic insight, casting out demons, not afraid, not cowering in the night. We'll see the broken restored, the rejected accepted, and our church will act as a beacon of hope, unfazed by the darkness that surrounds us. And we're gonna be a church that makes room for the broken, those far from God, those that are seasoned saints that want to grow in their faith. Because the reality is God will take you in as you are. Thank you. But he'll never leave you where he found you. He's the great physician that will heal your heart, touch your mind, touch your mental stability, touch your emotions. So can we do this open-handed? Like this across every campus, this right here, this open-handed posture says, God, remove the clutter. Now, just between you and the Lord, as a son, as a daughter, eyes closed, not worried about anybody around you, just let him know, say, God, take some of this clutter. You know what it is. That thing that's been robbing you of your peace, whatever is robbing you of your peace is too expensive. Whatever is messing with your joy, lay it down now. Let go of it today. And God, we make room, we make room, we make room. And we ask God that you pluck out and remove anything that's out of you. But the same posture of open-handedness is also a posture to receive a deposit from him today. We make room for whatever you want to do. God, if we have the capacity in the right now, in this season, to steward what you entrust us with, 
these moms, these dads, future moms and dads, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, our church family, if we have the capacity to steward what you want to bless us with, then pour it out. But if in this season you need to close the door according to your will, we're okay with that too because we know that you're working in our favor. So right now with our hands lifted across every campus, would you just begin to worship him just for a moment? And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to yeah. I will make room to do whatever you want to do whatever you want to whatever you want to to do whatever you want to I will make room I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, Jesus. To do whatever you want to. Move in our family. To do whatever you want to. Move in our lives, God. I will make room for you. Yes. To do whatever you want to. Whatever you want to. Let's go to that bridge. Come on, come on, come on. I love this part right here. This part right here. Cause your way is can't fully track you because your way is better can we give God praise today and thank him that his way is better his way is better it all belongs to you anyway Lord your way is so much better if you're here today everybody looking at me real quick watching online additional seating Katie Richmond Woodlands Tanzania you say Pastor Daniel man I needed this word today can I be trusted Maybe you're here today and you say, well, but the truth is I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. The reality is Jesus, this is what the Bible says, is the way, the truth, and the life. Our church does not believe that all gods lead back to one God. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. The only way to the Father is through him. And the Bible says this in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. So that's the first invitation. Someone who's watching online at one of our campuses would say, I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. Or maybe the second invitation, you would say, I used to know him, but I got caught up. Caught up. I got caught up in the prodigal life. I got caught up in some stuff that I'm not proud of. And the truth is, today I need to clear the clutter. Today I need to abandon some things and lay it at his feet. I need to realign my heart with his heart. 
and rededicate my life. All right, now, if you'll just close your eyes for just a moment, just out of respect to those who maybe that's tugging on their hearts today. I want to give my life to Jesus for the first time or I want to rededicate my life. If that's you, would you slip up your hand across every campus? You're talking about me. I fit in one of those two categories. I see you, I see you, I see you. I want to give my life to Jesus. I see you, I see you. I want to rededicate my life. I see you, I see you. Today's my day. I see you, I see you here. I saw you there, over there, over there. Come on, Hope City, I see you. Come on, can we give God praise? Sorry, my friend. All right, can everybody, everybody pray this prayer? Pray this prayer even if you didn't lift up your hand. God didn't need to see your hand. He saw your heart. So come on right now, even sitting at home, say this out loud. Jesus, it's me. From this moment on, I'm choosing to abandon all my shame, all my sin, all the things that I'm entangled in. I repent. And I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, thank you for hanging on the cross, saying that I was valuable, giving up your life for mine, and then getting up out of the grave three days later so that I could live a life filled with freedom, filled with hope, and filled with peace. You are my Father. I confess you as my Savior. You are my Lord in Jesus' name. It's a really great opportunity to shout right there.